want to ask you something about friendship that you have written in your book too you compare a good friendship to a caring mother you argue scientifically in your book the reasons for the increase of anxiety depression anger and suicide are due to the lack of good friendship can you tell us how that is yes indeed um, certainly i will go into that in fact i have written about this in my second volume of self help neuropsychology in tamil although i am yet to write it uh, in english it's not a huge issue in english setting but it is an important thing for tamil culture i have been to now three uh, british universities and got graduated from two the third one is just coming up uh, very soon all the three of them are world ranking universities when i say these it does not mean uh, to be arrogant or proud because whenever mr ptr the present finance minister spoke against the neat exam uh, he he used to say how much uh, of such exams he has undergone and uh, their own uh, flaws and the need for reform and change now when people who suffer from black and white thinking uh, accuse of him being so arrogant intellectually uh, i used to feel so pity in fact uh, he is not arrogant uh, but he is being honest and assertive so there is a difference between being arrogant and assertive see arrogance means Uh, someone uh, who is full of himself does not want to listen to anybody else at all but whereas he is not being arrogant but he is assertive he is uh, basing his arguments on facts and findings and he gives his opinions in fact many of the interviews he says uh, come on let people say what they feel if there is some mistake i am ready to correct i am ready to uh, listen so therefore i think uh, he is actually being honest honest and assertive i think he comes out so well uh, as i know uh, that um, his doctorate was in psychology although he went on to banking afterwards now the point is to say uh, that uh, when i say i have studied psychology and done research in world reputed universities and therefore uh, i'm trying to say that i feel the need to be assertive not being arrogant to say what i think is good for my tamil community worldwide so through my social and academic communication i have made plenty of friends and even uh, in the area where i live at present there are plenty of friends and uh, they are uh, they are so loyal and would not let me down my own personal experience is that come what may uh, they really stick up for me so uh, they stand uh, by you uh, no amount of coercion or gossip of any sort will change their perception of you but uh, this is not the case with my native tamil nadu uh, people the whole history of colon- uh, colonization is built on the theme of disunity created by betrayal where the friends ditched each other indian history in fact is littered with the plenty of examples starting with the uh, battle of uh, plassey in uh, 1757 uh, the first war against british rule um robert clive on the one hand had a bare minimum of soldiers and far less uh, ammunition i think only 3000 soldiers compared to nawab of bengal siraj uddaulaus 50000 infantry soldiers 40 sets of war cannons and 10 sets of compact elephants and so uh, how could still siraj uddaula lose and robert clive win it's nothing but a trick robert clive tricked all the loyal friends of siraj uddaula particularly jafar ali khan uh, yar luthid khan and roy durlab as a result the nawab of bengal was defeated and then we know the history all the others followed the same fate so this sort of betrayal was so common during the british raj in india and more particularly in tamil nadu even to this day for example in the case of veerappandiya kattabomman uh, veerappan uh, belunachiyar veera thiran sinamalai and uh, the latest one is velupilla prabhagaran the same thing happened uh, to all these people they were all betrayed by their own closest aides who were very loyal and friendly first then turning out to be uh, foes and deadly i know even now some of my colleagues here used to say that this sort of behavior 
uh, this sort of behavioral attitude has not changed in our society, be in India or among those Tamils living abroad, uh, much uh, compared to the colonial era. The friendliness between family members, companions, work colleagues, and neighbors is good at the, initi at the initial stages when everything goes well, but when something goes wrong, then same friendliness is converted into bitter and poisonous enmity. This is a huge limitation to Tamils all over the world. We do not find the same among other ethnic groups. Of course, we, we, we find, but the ratio varies. The ratio is very high among the Tamil community compared to other ethnic groups. So I think, uh, so I thought I shall write about it in Tamil. Uh, like any other articles, I have written an essay in this book on the title of Friendship Examining Evolutionary, Historical, Social, Behavioral, and Developmental Aspects of Friendship with the Lords of Science and Research. It is very interesting how you present the historical perspective of friendship with prominent people like Fidel Castro, Sheik Guaria, Wright Brothers, Abraham Lincoln, Joshua Speed, Jesus, his disciples and others. Can you explain if there are any reasons why some good friends become suddenly enemies? Thank you, Asha, for this question. I made a mention of this above uh, and did not explain in detail. Sorry about that. Perhaps I should now. There are a couple of points here. One, as you just mentioned, there are very good many people in history uh, who were remarkable friends and stood by each other in pain and pleasure, success and failures, joys and sorrows, irrespective of any possible division like caste, religion, or any possible segregation. For example, uh, Che Guevara is from Argentina, and Fidel Castro, although from Cuba, in fact, uh, he is of uh, Spanish origin, but both of them, so thick friends and no internal power or authority uh, from outside could break into their friendship. Abraham Lincoln was helped by Joshua Speed in the initial stages of his life, which Abraham Lincoln remembered all through his life and made a specific remark even after he became the president of the United States. There are some good examples in Tamil Nadu as well. Tandai Periyar, Arinar Anna and Kalina Karnanedi were good friends. Although Anna and Kalina later drifted away from Periyar and formed a DMK party, still they had a huge respect for Periyar. In fact, both of them and their DMK party are so grateful to Periyar until this day. The other uh, example uh, is uh, Amma Jalilida and Chinnamma Sasikala. Uh, they were very good friends. They stood shoulder to shoulder to each other in almost everything, whether it was success or failure, joy or sorrow, accident or pain from the start to the end, more than 30 years, I think. I know many of top officials in India who had hugely admired their friendship. In fact, they were surprised that these two had uh, utmost loyalty and a bond at the center of their relationship. Uh, I have mentioned all this in my uh, book, Volume 2, Namwalvil Ulavil, uh, Part 2, Baham Irand, uh, that has come out in all the available formats, including paperback, ebook, and audio, and they are all available throughout the world. You can access them either by putting my name on Google or clicking at the description box uh, of this video where details can be found. Secondly, the opposite of a loyal and devout friendship, which is bitter, jealous, and bubbling enmity that one develops either by oneself or develops at the prompts of uh, somebody. Someone like Robert Clive, whom I mentioned first influencing the loyalists of Nawaf of Bengal in order to defeat him. Now, why and how some good friends turn out to be terrible foes, even to the extent of betraying or killing the very own friend with whom they shared lots of things in common. There, are, uh, there could be so many reasons, but I tend to focus on uh, psychological ones. It could be, firstly, mere jealousy or envy that... Uh, this person is in a privileged position and I am not. So this person is in a way hindrance to my greed and uh, wish. Uh, and so uh, there is a need to get rid of him or her uh, and occupy that person's position. Uh, that's what we find in the story of uh, Julius Caesar and his friends. 
uh, as we all know, Julius Caesar is known for his administrative ability who invented the present calendar system as well as the police force. His own friend started to stab him when he saw his own friend Brutus joining uh, the perpetrators to kill him. The famous statement he made was, you to Brutus. The same thing happened to Jesus when, when betrayed by his own friend Judas. The LTT chief, Mr. Velupula Prabhagaran, was cheated by his own most trusted aide and friend Karnagaran. All these are examples of jealousy and envy or at the center of friendship turning to be hatred breeding enmity. Now, we notice this sort of situation in our day-to-day -day lives too. Many have expressed their disappointment about how their own friends suddenly became so ungrateful that they even started to work against them. I know while many of my close friends were happy with my growth a few back in India, but just to stop even talking to me just because I became whatever I am now. Might be that I had the opportunities to study in world reputed universities and grow and so on and so forth. Now the question is, what are the psychological processes around this? Could be that these people, in addition to what was mentioned above or uh, with jealousy or envy, might be also that they are exposed to continued stress, depression and anxiety, that the chemicals in their brain got altered, that they cannot function as normal as they were in the past. Remember, according to neuroplasticity, our brain can change in size and structure. And so continuous stress exposure to continuous stressful exposure to situations can mess up the thinking, and so they become easily subject to any brainwashing. These are the people who tend to develop high levels of either inferiority or superiority complex. They tend to think in black and white. They also maintain high levels of also perception and belief that as truth. For example, the caste or regional or linguistic affinity that some people uh, create, or people going on to YouTube saying completely nonsense. And then have the followers to endorse them are the good examples for this. In neuroscience, there is a very powerful statement, uh, neurons that fire together, wire together. I really love this. And in fact, that's true uh, too. If we constantly and consistently say something totally stupid as a noble idea, then uh, those listen to it, believe it, uh, that one as truth eventually. In fact, it gets registered as truth in their head, Somehow, I suppose, intuitively, Dr. Ambedkar and Periyar, much before the modern day neuroscience spoke very heavily against this sort of false perception being justified to be a divine truth. For example, the caste system being justified, uh, one, the higher and the other belong to a lower, a lower caste. Um, I have seen this even among the well-educated and qualified people, not only in India, but also in Britain. Now, these people are, according to neuroscience, called people who suffer from emotional illiteracy. They are most likely to suffer from lots of anger and relationship issues. They tend to sway like a reed in the water. They change sides so quickly. Most of the time, uh, they identify themselves with those in power and authority, no matter uh, if they, uh, whether um, they, they follow people who are uh, good. And these sorts of people can very easily become friends as well as uh, the opposite uh, the enemies. How to have good friends? Are there any tips that you can offer so that we can follow, pass on to others? Thank you, Asha, uh, for this question. Yes, um, certainly, it is important to have good friends. Having uh, good friends results in psychological as well as physiological benefits. Uh, there are research findings that indicate non-toxic and good supportive friendship boosts one's immunity and increases the longevity. Uh, as said before, uh, Tandai Periyar and Kalina Karananidhi can be said as examples on uh, physiological benefit levels since both of them lived long amidst hectic and stressful political and social pressures. The other uh, psychological benefit, benefit is uh, good friendship helps to develop inner emotional resilience and build an internal resolve or determination to succeed, especially at the face of hardships, failures and difficulties. I think we can say 
uh, Amma, Jalida and Chinnamma, Sasikala's good examples of this, since both of them uh, did not give up on each other when uh, going through predominantly male-dominated social and political scenario in Tamil Nadu politics. Good friendship does boost one's self-esteem, self-confidence, aiding social development and overall growth. I think uh, Fidel Castro and Che Guevara could be set as good examples of this. Uh, there are research findings that tell us that the increase in suicide rates are mainly due to lack of good friendship or because of bad friendships. Now, Asha, as you have asked how to have good friends, good friends, particularly when the social media platform providers with the limitless contacts. So sometimes uh, it's very hard to believe and not to believe people. Neuropsychology would say most of the time hate unites people quicker than love or friendship. This happens among people who have very low level of psychological knowledge or awareness, which we find very common among us Tamils, both in Tamil Nadu as well as uh, in overseas. Um, that's why any bad or aggressive content become viral in the social media, not the good content. In fact, I have written a topic on hate and why do people hate and what might be the scientific and psychological reasons in the in my recent book, Namwarvil Ulavil Baham Yirandu. That is uh, for another time for more discussion. It is easy to get bad friends, but hard to have good friends. Again, it's not an impossible task if we really put our heart and mind into it with openness and a little bit of psychological awareness and knowledge. We do not get people who are perfect in every way as friends. I know some of my friends have some limitations. Probably they might find me as well with some limitations or weaknesses, but they are not toxic. And so we can actually tolerate and find common grounds to exist uh, uh, peacefully. A good friendship a good friendship is that which is healthy, not breeding hate or malicious gossip. And it promotes overall well-being, not only for those in friendship, but also others who are around. I remember in one of the YouTube videos, the present finance minister of Tamil Nadu, Mr. P.T.R. Palanivel Dhyagarajan said something like, we want to attend and participate in Muslim or uh, Christian celebrations just to confirm that you do not need to feel inferior or you are uh, out of the mainstream of the society just because you are a minority. That is, I think, is a perfect example of uh, um, how good friendship brings uh, overall goodness and happiness. Sometimes we find when some people get together as friends, the people around them become very nervous and unhappy. Uh, this might be that the friendship is to cause harm to others, but in fact, they cause damage to themselves as well as to others eventually. I have suggested in my book some tips choosing friends. Maybe I could share some of them now. Number one, see if they carry around themselves positive vibrations. Because remember, I have said before, hate unites people with low psychological awareness quickly. I know and I have been around some friends in the past. They always used to engage in malicious gossip, talk ill of others. Actually, I could not get out of them. For some reason, I just continued until I realized how damaging that uh, had been on an uh, emotional level. And it took away my independent thinking and doings. It's better to check every now and then if our friendship is helping us or causing us damage. This can only be done when we have at least a minimum uh, psychological thinking and awareness. Number two, along with vibrations, look out for what unites you with your friends or what friends use to unite with yourself. It has to be healthy on uh, both the physical as well as the psychological levels. Look out for healthy common interests and growth. Anything that is making you and your family sick and unwell need to be addressed carefully and uh, the corrective actions need to be undertaken. Third one, uh, I suppose, would be start to look out into yourself as well as into your uh, friendship. This means the mode of viewing and thinking. Sometimes people have this sort of black and white thinking, like all the people from this area uh, or from this caste or from this religion uh, are bad or just the opposite. Uh, this is what a period used to be angry with. 
people who have this sort of thinking are considered to be psychologically ill people. The opposite is called holistic thinking, which involves the use of rational thinking, questioning, uh, scrutinizing, and this is what Periyar was after. Unfortunately, many of us cage Periyar more into his atheistic stand than the much bigger social um, transformation he envisaged. True or good friendship should be focused on holistic thinking rather than black and white thinking for its healthy and peaceful survival. Number four, such a friendship will survive or people will stick to each other no matter what happens to them. They do not change sides for selfishness or their self-survival only. A final word on that is to encourage people to spend some time in choosing friends. I would say if you want to have a good friend in life and lead a healthy and happy life, uh, please do take some time before studying psychology. Uh, after listening to uh, this uh, seminar, please uh, try to learn Tamil and read and listen to Periyar's speech. They are full of wisdom. Have a thick skin for his views on religion. Again, if you know the context why he spoke against religion and gods, you will sympathize with the Periyar. He was against the oppressive and dehumanizing God and religious ideology only, not against God or any uh, religions for uh, their very existence. Because as said before, we get plenty of contacts through lots of social media, but if we can't make all of them friends. Of course, some do then get into problems and things become quite bad and weird. We need to question ourselves why we like this person. What attracts me to this person? Is there anything that's common that can help this person and myself to grow? to be happy. Can I trust this person? Is it just infatuation that I like this person or that person likes me? Or is he or she is a, uh, is he or he a good person? How can I know if the person is good or bad, although this person claims to be good? So uh, if you can address these questions towards yourself and then think before choosing a friend, uh, then I suppose you will find a good friend. Thank you, Nandri.